what's going on guys edward here with another video this time um we're gonna be answering actually uh one of your questions uh, some of you guys left me on on my telegram group um regarding this, this strategy you know the strategy the diamond strategy um, and not and, and in fact not just the actual diamond strategy but like how to trade fundamentals and news and, and all that stuff you know that can affect the markets um depending depending on the actual news so it, well to answer that question i i do trade sometimes based on fundamentals or i i tend to include fundamentals a little bit on my strategy yes because it could affect however it's it, it depends on the day it depends on the news it, it can be kind of tricky so you got to be careful if you want to guide if you want to go just with the fundamental just with the actual fundamental just with the actual news okay if you're doing the scalping for example uh, you gotta just maybe just get in and out like right quick because just just an example right here for example let's suppose this was the actual news you saw I don't know the non-farm payroll you know it was negative so and Nasdaq like it started to be you know affected so it started to fall so sometimes you can see this you know you can see a big fall of maybe 120 pips and then the next candle can come back up immediately so you gotta be quick that's why it's it's kind of dangerous. Sometimes it can continue dropping after the news, or sometimes maybe five to ten minutes after the news, you know, after the price falling, it can come back up right quick. And it, you know, it was like nothing happened. You know, the price stayed pretty much at the same level where, where it began to fall. So you gotta be careful with you with the fundamentals. Just with the fundamentals, you gotta be careful. You you have to, you know know where you are i would say um to me is like i can use it in combination for example i'm using the diamond strategy at 8 30 in the morning every day right to trade nasdaq and us 30. for you guys that are out there in south africa is it should be 3 30 p.m so i usually trade at that time okay if i see something different after that I may get in, but maybe, you know, following price action, basically, following price action. Sometimes on the news, um, it's very explosive. Like I mentioned, depending on the news, it's very explosive. So you gotta be careful. If you're going in, you gotta go in, you gotta go in and out like right away, like just taking profits right away, a couple of pips, and then you're out. Be careful with that. So basically what I do is I go on, on investing.com okay economic calendar you can just uh type in the words you know economic calendar investing and you go on the first link right and it's gonna send you directly to this part right here so what what do i do i usually i set my time of course in simon south america i'm gonna go for my time let's see it's a little slow Okay, so I'm going to go for my time, Bogota, there we go, it's 5.52 p.m. right now, I'm going to go now on the filter, and because I'm doing NASDAQ, I'm going to be filtering just the countries that I, that I want, okay, I'm just going to clear all of that, and I usually go with the United States, just United States, sometimes if I, if I'm doing a pair, I don't know, I mean, GBP, USD, I just, maybe I may be activating the United Kingdom as well, just to watch some news. Right here, in this type, I'm gonna select all. I select all of them. And right here in this part, I'm gonna select the three stars only. I don't wanna, this one, two stars or one star, I don't like that, uh, because the this type of news, they don't, they don't affect that much. They don't pretty much affect. So I'll go with the three, all right? So I go to apply. And, and that's it. For example, for tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, Monday in the United States, it's a holiday. So, of course, the, um, the markets are barely going to be moving. I don't think they're going to be having that much action. 
So we can just watch, be careful for tomorrow, okay? Now, if you wanna go for this week, you can just select the tab for this week and now you can see a couple of news right there. So Monday, it's a holiday, there's nothing. Tuesday, you have pretty much one news and manufacturing. You have a three star, you know, then this is the, what you see here, these numbers, this is what really matters, okay, at this point. Let's suppose, let's try to look, oh, for example here, this one, the ADP non farm pair uh, employment. And this one, if you wanna know what is this about, what, what, it, what is this about, because I don't know. So you can click on that, another tab is gonna open, now you can read, okay? So basically it's gonna to explain to you what the ADP is, the report measure of the monthly change in non-farm, you know, private employment, based on the payroll data of approximately 400,000 US business clients and da da da, yada, yada, yada. And right here, read this part. This is what you're looking for basically. A higher than expected reading should be taken as a positive or bullish for the USD. So that's basically telling you, you know, if it's a higher than expected reading, then the, you know, the volatility should be positive and should be going bullish for the USD. So remember that the USD dollar, the, the US dollar, basically, if, you know, with the, if the price is going up, if it's going really good for the USD, you can see the changes maybe in some pairs, USD, JP, uh, JPY, um, Euro USD maybe coming down. Uh, the Nasdaq may be effective, even you know we could be positively. Uh, the dollar could actually, uh, I'm sorry, the gold could actually be dropping. If US dollar is going up, the gold usually goes down. The same with the Euro USD. So you know GBP USD could could also be going down. So depends depends on the news. Okay, so you do. And uh, remember, what, if you wanna know what's the news about, you can just go right there. You can click, you can click on the actual news right here and it will send you to the link where it's going to explain you what's the news about, okay? Now, basically to give you another example, when they say, uh, you know, uh, a higher than expected reading should be taken as positive or bullish for the USD. With a lower than expected reading should be taken as a negative bearish. So right here, I'm gonna give you this example. You see this actual, you see forecast and you see the previous. So usually right here, you see forecast, previous and actual. You see actual, there's nothing yet because the news uh, are in the future. So no news at the moment, right? So for example, uh, initial jobless claims, for example, right here, you can see a green, you can see previous. This was the previous uh, reading, which was 406K, right? The forecast is what is lower, right? 395K. So it is telling you that the, for some reason, maybe the economic or, you know, it was actually dropping. The initial jobless claims are less. So if there are less jobless claims, it means it's good for the, for the economy, right? There, because there, uh, let's see, there are less jobless claims. So if there are less, it means there is good. So this is the forecast, right? This is the forecast. If by the time the news comes in, which is 7.30 in the morning, right here in Colombia, and, and South Africa should be 2.30, if I'm not mistaken, 2.30 p.m. So. If by any chance, the number here, let's suppose you see a number 410K. If you see 410K, what does that mean? It means that the forecast was wrong. The, the jobless claims actually went up. That means it's bad for the, for the USD. You see what I mean? So you have to have a little bit of uh, knowledge about that, how, how it works, you know, you know, a little bit of math, a little bit of, you know, using your common sense, basically, you know, if the, now, in, if this is different, you know, the, the actual forecast was 395 and you see a 385, you know, it was lower than, than the forecast. So it's even better because there are less jobless claims. So 
the less, the better, the higher, the better. I don't know how to say it in, in, in English. So it's bad if it's higher number here than this, it's gonna be bad. If it's lower, it's good for the USD. You see what I mean? So that's basically how to detect and how to know if it's gonna be a good news or bad news. Basically, you need to be checking uh, on the actual news. So another thing is, let's suppose at 7.30, the news are gonna be you know, coming out. So that means on the first, let's say 15 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes is crucial, okay? Because you may not be seeing a move right away like at 7 30 a.m you're gonna be moving uh, you're gonna be seeing a moving uh, a movement right away uh you know pushing up or pushing down you may not be able to see it because the news are happening like somebody may be speaking and telling these these numbers so what i would say is between you know the first 15 minutes let's say till 7 45 until that point, maybe the price may not be moving yet. After the first 15 minutes, you might be seeing some movement. Sometimes it can, it can be coming at maybe 7.35, maybe five minutes after the, the news has started, you know, that, you know, somebody reading the news and all that. So it can take a couple of minutes to, you know, for the market to be affected and start moving. Okay, you make sense? So, you have to be aware of that. You have to, you know, be checking right here on the news to see the actual, what is the actual movement? What is the actual number that is that is going? Uh, I, th I think there are some other CNBC news that you can watch maybe the news live, you know, whenever the spokesman, you know, speaker man, or I don't know how, spokesman, I think spokesman, you know, when they, I start sharing the news and all that. You can watch them live. I don't have a link here for you guys yet. If I found one, I will leave them on the description. Um, but that's that's basically it, okay? That's basically how to know the fundamentals. This is basically trading news. It's kind of dangerous because like I mentioned, sometimes the price could either, you know, start dropping right away or melting right away. Like here, you know, it started to push up very quick but you know, luckily it didn't come down. It you know, started to consolidate. So it depends, guys. Like I mentioned, it depends. It's dangerous to trade just fundamentals. If you're gonna do it, you have to do maybe scalping on a one minute and just follow a, and just get a couple of pips, maybe 60, 50 pips, 70 pips. It depends. You can you can set up, you know, you can set up that at least of 50 pips. Okay, or as soon as you see a 50 pip push up, then you move your stop loss, you put your stop loss to break even and just let it run if you want, you know? It's kind of risky, like I mentioned, but if you know how to put your stop loss right there, which I recommend you, you know, you should be using that. Um, you can use the same pretty much. You can open the news for any type of country. Let's say you're trading with the, I don't know, the Euro, Euro USD. So you open, you're gonna open the filter for Europe, you're gonna look for Europe, uh, European Union, Eurozone, I think it's this one right here. And then you go apply. And let's see, here you go, here you go. You see some news right there. I don't know what this is. So if I want to know what this is, I'm gonna just click on it. And let's see. So consumer price index measures the change in the price of goods, services from the perspective of the customer. It is a key way to measure changes, purchase, and trends in inflation. So you know, <clears throat> you can see the details by clicking on that. You can see what was the previous percentage and what is the forecast. So it's expected to go high. So based on the news, you have to understand, you have to read. That's why you have to read a lot because you have to understand what the news is about. So consumer measures a change in the price of goods and services from the perspective of the customer. So basically, basically means if the price, well, I would say if the price is coming up, the percentage is bad. If it goes, 
the percentage goes lower, it, I would say is good. So based on that, you know, you can see at the moment what the price is going to be, what the news is going to be saying, what's going to be the percentage here, and this may affect either the Euro USD, Euro GBP, uh, Euro JPY, you know, if you're trading pairs, okay? But that's, that's basically it, okay? So I, you know, I hope this information was helpful and it give you a little bit more of context on, on how to trade news. Like I mentioned, be careful. If you wanna be just trading news, be careful. If, for example, because I know I'm gonna be trading the, the diamond strategy, which is every day at 8.30 in the morning, let's see, right here, right here, right? So what I usually do is I have to know where I'm standing. If you're seeing this pattern right here, I'm just testing again, you know, I used to trade a lot with this type of patterns. So I'm just testing something. Um, so anyways, 8.30 right here, it's gonna be 3.30 p.m. in South Africa. So I have to know where I'm standing. If I'm standing is still within this block right here, my rule is if the price start pushing down this structure right here, this is a very strong structure, I'm gonna be looking for a sell. And if the price starts to push up, even go higher than this resistance right here, this block, this zone right here, I'm gonna be looking for buys at this home. Meanwhile, the price is right here. I'm not gonna be looking for any type of entry because the price has been consolidating for a couple of days now. So it's not, it's not good. Whenever the price is like that, no. I don't, I don't like trading inside of that. If I find something I may be getting in, if I find something nice, maybe a nice pattern or something, I might may be getting it, but it's more risky, okay? So usually expect for the block, for this area, for this zone right here to be broken, either above or below, okay? If I'm watching the news and, you know, whatever news is, you know, and I, if I see a lot of volatility, you know, so the price coming down right here, very, like very fast, just one single candle dropping and dropping and dropping. I may be getting in after the breakout, but it's kind of dangerous, you know, like I mentioned, because it might, as soon as the candle closes the and the time ends right here, it might be returning back up. So it's a big, big fake out because of the news. So I have to be aware of that and I have to be taking profits as soon as possible. Like you, you, you should not be letting this run for a long time. You should be you should be closing it like I mentioned at least fifty to sixty pips. You know it's the safest way. I mean you can. You, you, I'm not telling you you can. I'm telling you you shouldn't. Okay, the safest way. The safest way. So that being said, guys, I I hope you know this information was helpful. I hope you are able to make some notes, and um, I will guy I will see you guys in the next episode. Please subscribe if you're new in this channel. Leave your comments below if you have any questions. Uh, give it a big thumbs up. It helped me a lot. We are growing this channel so fast, guys. I'm, I'm amazed, okay? We're already over 2K. And I'm pretty sure we are going to reach the 3,000 subscribers this week, hopefully. <laughs> so thank you so much, guys, for being here. Have a wonderful day. Take it easy. I hope you have an amazing week. Take it easy, guys.